Welcome to Savvy Sab's podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. So guys, I don't have a Q&A today because I have a special announcement. I found out yesterday that I have been chosen to be the master of ceremony for the Medicare for All March in Boston. Woohoo! I'm super excited. I am incredibly honored that I was selected to do this. Guys, I'm going to be speaking in front of a lot of people, so cross your fingers for me, but definitely excited about that. For those who don't know, there are Medicare for All marches going on in July, July 24th, all across this country. There are multiple cities that are on the list. If you are interested and you want to participate, please follow M4M4All on Twitter so you can stay updated with everything that's going on with that. A lot of people don't know, but this is actually the way that Canada did it. When they passed universal health care, they did it by province. They didn't do it, you know, nationally. And I just don't think that that's going to happen for us here in the U.S. I don't see, you know, the House and the Senate passing Medicare for all nationally across this country. So at this point, I think the best way to go about it is to go state by state, go through the states. We have a Medicare for all bill sitting in the House in Massachusetts right now, just sitting there. So if you are in the Boston area, July 24th, and you can come out, please come out to the Medicare for All March. We'll be starting in Nubian Square, and we will end up at Boston Common. We're going to have some pretty cool guest speakers, but I can't tell you who they are yet because that is on the hush. So yeah, that's my exciting news. But now I want to get into today's news. So Sean King has come under fire. Yesterday, Sean King was trending on Twitter and not for good reasons. For those who don't know, Sean King is a writer. At one point in time, he worked with TYT. It was a long time ago. He is known for covering stories about, you know, police brutality. Some of us in the African-American community are not too fond of Sean King. Not all of us, but some of us. Some of us feel that Sean King basically profits off of police killing unarmed Black people. I tried to find a nicer way to say that, but I couldn't really think of a nicer way to say it. So I just got straight to the point there. But that's not why he was trending on Twitter. Sean King was trending because Samir Rice, Tamar Rice's mother, posted a statement on Instagram about Sean King and how she really did not appreciate what he did with her son's story. For those who don't know, Tamar Rice was the 12-year-old little boy who was killed by a police officer. He was on the playground. I think it was a park actually was a park and he was playing with a toy gun. Police officers thought that he had a real gun and they shot and killed him. That was Tamar Rice. He was only 12 years old. I want you to hear what Tamar Rice's mother said about Sean King. Listen to this. So this is the post that she put on Instagram says Sean King. So it's addressed directly to him. Why do you think it's so important to tell folks we had a conversation? Well, we talked and everything that was said was very toxic and uncomfortable for me to hear that you raised additional money and then said you did not want to bother me. Personally, I don't understand how you sleep at night. Mm. I never gave you permission to raise anything or nothing. Let me scoot up here. Along with the United States, you robbed me for the death of my son. You gave me a cop and donut conversation. All lies, Sean. Please stop thinking we are on the same page. And then this part is interesting. As a white man acting Black, you are an imposter that cannot be trusted. I'll comment on that in a second. 
My son was 12 years old and DOJ needs to reopen his case, period. Tamar human rights were violated. Why would you so ever make it about you? You are a selfish, self-centered person and God will deal with you, white man. Whew. Let me pop out. So I want to address the white man comment. For those of you who are watching, you're probably like, what? Sean, Sean is, is, is black. So there have been rumors, and I, I don't know if this is true. So please, you know, just letting you know, hold on my phone. Boy, I tell you. I don't know what it is, you guys, but every time I want to record, that's when people want to contact me. Okay. Uh, there have been rumors that Sean King is actually a white man pretending to be black. I don't know if that's true. So I'm just telling you what the rumor is. Apparently, a while back, Somebody got a hold of his birth certificate and his birth certificate said that his dad was white. And we know that his mom is white. Sean King came out after that and said that his real father is a light skinned black man. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't there. Uh, I don't really know about his parents situation like that. So I don't really know. But that is a rumor that has been going around. So that is why she called him um, a white man. And apparently his family pictures that have been released all show that everyone in his family is white. Um, but again, I, I don't know. I don't know. But just letting you know why she said that. Now, this is very interesting. I can let you know that I checked yesterday and I checked again this morning. I have not seen a response from Sean King in reference to Tamar Rice's mother's statement on Instagram. But I did find another article that has also, you know, accusing Sean King of profiting off of police officers killing unarmed Black people. And it, this article also questions his funds. So listen to this. So this article is by uh, Jawan, the creator on Medium. Listen to this, you guys. Sean's King. Sean King's entire track record has a large history of questionable actions and alleged lies. He's been accused of lying about his very identity and upbringing as a biracial man and subsequent assault due to his race in Kentucky, such as with the Courageous Church in 2010 and HopeMob.org in 2012, his fundraising efforts and income information has been questioned by the people he allegedly was raising money for. That's interesting. And no one can seem to find the exact amounts raised or given by Sean or his associated entities. He has published intentionally or not, even if one is due to the incompetence of an editor, multiple false writings. Let me scoot up. Activists have claimed he has used their ideas and writings promising to support them just to claim credit for them himself after publishing similar articles or stories. Former employees and collaborators of his have called him out, such as when former directors of Justice Together claimed Sean's failure to communicate and lack of accountability and the ongoing security risk of volunteers personally identifiable information hurts the Black Lives Matter movement. The employees there said Sean spent most of his time running the organization to promote his New York Daily News and Daily and Daily Coast articles and offered no explanation for why the group folded in 2015 and left many activists without a job or a coalition to support them. Following Fox News host Bill O'Reilly accusing him of keeping the money from the coalition, Sean claimed that many of the people asking for refunds of their donation money were lying, but then said he did not have any of the money. Interesting. Let me pop back out. 
you know, this is why I tell people you got to be careful what cause and what people you choose to support. Because some people that pretend like they're acting in good faith, sometimes those people are not acting in good faith and they're just about a profit. I remember when Bernie first announced that he was running for president. The first, I guess, uh, gathering that I saw was Bernie in Brooklyn, New York. And in his old neighborhood in Brooklyn, I used to live in that neighborhood. He was over there at Brooklyn College. That's by the avenues in Brooklyn. And Sean King was one of the speakers. I think he was the first speaker, actually. Imagine if Bernie would have won and all the things that are coming out about Sean King now. Mainstream media would be hitting him left and right just simply for having Sean King there. But this is why I tell people you have to do your research. When people want to join or want to be a part of, you know, your election or, you know, something that you're working on as an organization, do your research on those people before you say yes to them. Because some people are not who they claim to be. I've sat here and I've watched for years. I've watched Sean King make money off of police killing unarmed Black people. In the beginning, I was like, okay, he's a part of Black Lives Matter. He's trying to bring this information to the public. He's trying to make sure this information is not hidden so more people know about it. Way to go. But as time went by, it seemed like to me, this was the main thing he was doing. Every time a police officer killed an unarmed black person, Sean King will write about and get paid for it every time. And so I had to question and think for a second, like, is this guy profiting off of black death? I never asked myself the question, is Sean King a white guy? When he said he was biracial, I just assumed he was biracial. That question actually didn't cross my mind. I never questioned his funds and where they were going. But as more and more information has come out, I do question these things. This is why you have to be careful about who you donate money to. I find it odd. I find it very strange that he can't seem to track the money that has been given to him. I find it odd. I find it strange that he seems to have no reporting of this. So what happened to all that money that people have given him? How do you not know what happened to your money? You have to be careful about who is involved in our movement. And I mean Black people. Because some people will get involved in Black movements because they're really passionate about it and they really want change. And then there are some people that will get involved in Black movements simply because they want to make money. Those people are out there. You have to be careful about who you bring in. The fact that Sean hasn't even responded to Tamar Rice's mom tells me everything I need to know about Sean. This woman's son was shot in broad daylight for playing with a toy gun. You had no problem talking to her and responding to her when you wanted to get a story, when you wanted to get paid but now you can't respond. There's no money in it. I posted yesterday on Twitter that Sean King is suspect. <laughs> I still believe that. You guys got to question that. Why is this dude always around every time police kill a black person and he gets paid for it? Twisting family members stories telling things that they did not want him to tell, not being honest. When you're a journalist and you go to meet with someone, if you're doing a story on them, 
you need to let them know you're doing a story. Don't tell them that you're just going to have a coffee conversation with them if you know you're going to take what they say and you're going to write about it. That's not good. And that lacks journalist integrity. And that's why some people don't trust journalists. Because of people like that. I don't know if Sean King is a white guy or not, but I do know that Sean King owes Tamar Rice's mother a huge apology.